8th lecture on Revelation. Today's text is Chapter 8. The title of Chapter 8 is The Trumpet. First, silence for half an hour, verses 1 through 6. Second, the first trumpet, verse 7. Third, the second trumpet, verses 8 through 9. Fourth, the third trumpet, verses 10 through 11. Fifth, the fourth trumpet, verses 12 through 13. Now read Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 2. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Here in chapter 8 are the seven trumpets' plagues. The beginning of chapters 6 and 7 teach about the seal. The first through sixth seals appear. Also, if you examine the text, there are seven trumpets within the seventh seal. Here in verse 1, it says that there was silence in heaven for half an hour when he opened the seventh seal. Here, half an hour is not a long time. It is a brief moment. It is during this time when we believers must prepare our faith. That is why we must prepare our faith well during this time of silence. There is little freedom of faith during this time. We can participate in worship, we can read the Bible, and we can pray freely. We can also preach the gospel. Revelation chapter 12 verse 14 Daniel chapter 12 verse 7 this is a period of time in which we pray and prepare our faith. However, this is a period of time in which the people of this world prepare for war. Those of this world stack up weapons in preparation for war. We must prepare our faith at this time. We be spiritually armed. We must fight the good fight well. Here it states that there was silence. This is the time when believers enter deep into the temple of God. Luke chapter 1 verses 8 through 10. It states here that the angels received seven trumpets. The trumpet plagues began because the half an hour silence came to an end. Verse 3 Another angel who had a golden censer and the altar, he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. Here an angel carries a censer and offers it before God. There is much incense. This refers to the beautiful deeds of believers obeying the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 14 through 15. This symbolizes the deeds of believers 
obeying the word, and keeping their faith. Second is the prayer of believers. The prayer of the believers goes up to God in the most beautiful way. Revelation chapter five verse eight, Second Corinthians chapter two verses fourteen and fifteen. We must be eager to pray before God. We must pray without ceasing. First Samuel chapter twelve verse twenty three. First Peter chapter four verse seven. As pastors, we must pray at least two hours each day. The devil attempts to take time away from prayer. If we pray hard before God, our prayers become beautiful, fragrant offerings before God. Next is verse four. The smoke of the incense, together with with the prayers of the saints, went up before God from the angel's hand. This wonderful aroma rises before God. Our prayers go up before God. Then God replies to our prayers. Verse five. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. This verse refers to God's judgment. This judgment comes as a response to the prayers of believers. This is because the believers. Prayed before God, in Revelation chapter six, verses nine and ten. God accepts the fact that the believers kept their faith. God takes the censer, fills it with fire, and passes judgment upon this world. God's wrath will be poured out. God will bring judgment on this sinful world. That is why there was thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Verse seven. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood. And it was hurled down upon the earth. A third of the earth was burned up. Here the first trumpet appears. The trumpet represents a warning. It is a warning concerning war. It is also a warning concerning God's judgment. Ezekiel chapter thirty-three, verse three. In the plague of the first trumpet, hail and fire mixed with blood will fall to the earth. This is the release of God's wrath. Exodus chapter seven, verse twenty. In Exodus chapter nine, verse eighteen. There is a plague of hail. Psalm chapter eighteen, verse twelve. Isaiah chapter thirty, verse thirty. God said He would judge with fierce flames, storms, heavy rain, and hail. Here, blood represents life. To be mixed with blood. Means that life has ended. This symbolizes a war of slaughter. Also, hail symbolizes disaster. Fire symbolizes judgment. 
Therefore, many people will die by God's wrath and destruction. It states that this destruction will be hurled down on the earth. The earth refers to the dwelling place of sinners. Trees symbolize great people, men with influences. Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 3. Also, the green grass represents normal people, the common people. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 7. It says that a third of the earth was burned up. Zechariah chapter 13 verses 8 and 9. There are three kinds of people in this world. First, there is the spiritual and sophisticated believer. Next in the middle is the normal believer. Next, there is the unbeliever. For instance, the spiritual believer is one who is like Abraham. The believer in the middle is like Abraham's nephew, Lot. Abraham's nephew is Lot. This Lot served God with one hand and served the world with his other hand. In this way, disaster will be aimed towards the middle class. These people in the middle class will receive judgment. This also symbolizes the environmental disaster on earth. Sometimes war brings disaster on the earth. The ecosystem will be destroyed due to weaponry, bombs such as missiles, and nuclear weapons. Also, the trees of this world gradually disappear. Lands face desertification, and the desert lands gradually widen. In this way, the environment will be destroyed in the last days. Deserts will gradually grow. Deserts gradually widen as the earth gets warmer. Also, because of the development of industries, many trees are cut down and used for paper. In this way, these kinds of disasters will occur. Verse 8, The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. Verse 9. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The second angel releases the plague of the second trumpet. The huge mountain refers to powers as big and solid as the mountains. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 25. These powers refer to Babylonian forces, Gentile religious forces, forces of noble men, forces of family, and forces of philosophy, and etc. It means that these powerful forces will be broken. These forces will eventually receive 
judgment before God. Here, the sea symbolizes the world. Chapter seventeen, verse fifteen. It also states that the ships were destroyed. The ships here symbolize the cultural instruments of this world, worldly culture, certain tools, institutions and organizations, and scientific civilizations. All these things will be broken. All possessions of mankind will be destroyed. Also, war could possibly take place in the sea. This means that the world of humanism will be broken and will be no more. That is, all forces of the world will be broken. A third of the ocean will become blood. Blood symbolizes death. This refers to contamination of the ocean. Also, ships could be ruined as a result of war. Warships could also be destroyed. The ships. Could be destroyed by storms. They could also be destroyed by earthquakes, tsunamis, or tidal waves. The ocean will become polluted. The earth gradually becomes warmer. The icebergs of Antarctica melt. Thus, the sea level rises. When it rains, it will rain hard. Green algae will form due to the warming of the seas. In this way, the oceans will become contaminated. The oceans will become like the desert. Therefore, fish will not be able to live in its waters. That is how it will become seas of death. One third of it will be destroyed. It will become a sea of death. Happiness will fade. People will not be able to eat fish. Hence, people will face difficulties. The sea will become polluted. It may become polluted by nuclear weapons, and it could become polluted by the destruction of a nuclear reactor. It could also become contaminated. As a result of war, or be contaminated by falling bombs. In addition, living creatures will die because the ocean will become contaminated by oil spills. These are the plagues of the trumpets. Next is the plague of the third trumpet. Read verses ten through eleven. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The plague of the third trumpet appears. The great star 
symbolizes pastors. Chapter one, verse twenty. Daniel chapter twelve, verse three. In the last days, pastors will become corrupted. They will betray God. Cults will appear. Many apostates will appear. These religious workers tarnish the truth. Here there are rivers and springs of water. The rivers and springs of water symbolize God's word. Ephesians chapter five verse twenty six. In the last days, religious leaders will become corrupt. They will tarnish the truth. Those who listen to the tarnished truth will be spiritually dead. Corrupt pastors and false prophets appear. They invert the truth. They do not say that sin is sin. Isaiah chapter five verse twenty. It says that the name of the star is wormwood. Many people died. The corrupted false prophets kill the spirits of people. The teachings of false prophets are flesh oriented. It is emotionalism of the body. These are greed and materialism. It is of the world. This is what it is for water to transform into wormwood. Ezekiel chapter thirteen verse nineteen. However, true prophets make bitter water sweet. Exodus chapter fifteen verse twenty five, Second Kings chapter two verses nineteen through twenty two, First Peter chapter two verse two. We must receive the pure word of God as it is. In addition, this means that rivers and springs of water. Will be environmentally polluted. For example, let's say a missile falls to the ground. Bombs fall as a result of war. Nuclear bombs fall. Next, biological weapons such as bacteria are dropped. Then chemical weapons are dropped. Hence, rivers and springs of water become contaminated. Thus, we will not be able to drink spring water. That is why many lives will die. God will use nature to bring disaster. Psalm chapter one o four verse four. We must not follow false ideas. We must not follow heresies, or new theologies, or liberalism, and we must not follow the false idea of evolution. Our spirits will eventually die if we follow these false ideas. Verse twelve: The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars. So that a third of them turned dark. The plague of the fourth trumpet appears. The plague of the fourth trumpet 
is the plague of the sun, moon, and stars. The sun symbolizes truth. The moon symbolizes the church. Stars symbolize wise believers. Chapter one, verse twenty. Daniel chapter twelve, verse three. The truth grows dim during the tribulations of the last days. Neither the church nor the church workers will shine. Faith will fall. Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-nine. This world will become a dark and chaotic world. In addition, the sun, moon, and stars could literally become darker in the last days. Exodus chapter ten, verses twenty-one and twenty-two. If believers do not obey God's word. Their spirits will also become darker. We must follow the word as it is. Furthermore, air could be contaminated in the last days. The sun will gradually grow dimmer. There could be changes in outer space. As well as changes of the sky. Also, the air will become polluted. Phenomenon like yellow dust will surface. Therefore, there will be many pollutants in the air. In these days, the amount of sunlight. That reaches the earth is gradually diminishing. This is due to smoke emitted by smokestacks. This is because people are burning many trees and coal as sources of fuel. Also, the air is becoming polluted due to the exhaust fumes from cars. In addition, the sun, moon, and stars will grow dimmer. Today, we must reveal the truth concerning the last days. Verse thirteen. As I watched. I heard an eagle that was flying in mid air call out in a loud voice, "Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth!" The eagle flying in mid air called out in a loud voice, "Woe, woe, woe!" This eagle represents God's judgment. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse forty-nine. Hosea chapter eight, verse one. Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-eight. It also says "woe, woe, woe" three times. This means that mankind. Will receive a great judgment. This refers to a great disaster. Here it says that the three angels are about to sound the trumpet blast. Beginning here in chapter nine, verse one, the plague of the fifth trumpet appears. From chapter nine, verse thirteen, the plague of the sixth trumpet appears. From chapter eleven, verse fifteen, the plague of the seventh trumpet appears. The eagle cries, 
Woe, 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 because these plagues are great. We believers must receive the plagues of the trumpets. We must receive the plagues of the sea and the trumpets. Today is the period of the trumpet plagues. Many of these disasters are happening all around us. Does it not say in the beginning that the sun, moon, and stars will grow darker? There were some cases in which they were darkened by ashes from volcanic explosions. We will now continue our lecture on Revelation chapter 9. Here the title of chapter 9 is The Abyss. First, the opening of the abyss, verses 1 through 2. Second, the plague of locusts verses 3 through 6. Third, the appearance of the locusts, verses 7 through 12. Fourth, the release of the four angels, verses 13 through 15. Fifth, the plague by the mounted troops, verses 16 through 21. Read chapter 9, verse 1. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. Here in chapter 9, verse 1, the plague of the fifth trumpet appears. Here there is a star that had fallen to the earth. This symbolizes the fallen angel, the devil. It also symbolizes the devil's servants. It also symbolizes apostates and heretics. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 The abyss is a bottomless pit. No matter how deep one may fall, there is no end. This is the pit of fire used to capture and trap the devil. This also symbolizes hell. Again, false prophets appear and deceive people. False prophets appear and destroy people using their own greed. Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 This represents endless greed. James chapter 1 verses 14 and 15 Next is verse 2. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. Smoke like that of a gigantic furnace rose from the abyss. As a result, the sun and sky were darkened. Here, Smoke like that of a gigantic furnace symbolizes evil ideologies. For example, they are philosophies, the theory of evolution, and other religions and cults. It symbolizes these false ideas. In addition, the thoughts of many people will become foolish because of the smoke. 
the thoughts of people will darken. They will think in wrongful ways. People will fall deep into greed and walk down wrong paths. Men will think only of themselves. They will think of their own greed. These people do not have faith. Here, the sun symbolizes truth, and air symbolizes the mind and its thoughts. The truth dims when one falls into greed. The spirit darkens. Then one cannot know the truth. Discernment fades. Therefore, we must walk by the truth. We must clear our minds so that we are not deceived by evil spirits. Verse thirteen. And out of the smoke, locusts came down upon the earth. And were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. The locusts came out of the smoke. They were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. Here, the locust is a rep is a relative of the grasshopper. These symbolize people who have fallen to greed. They also represent people who have fallen. They symbolize the characters of apostates. They symbolize the characters of those who have fallen into greed. Likewise, people cannot. Think straight when they fall to greed. Their characters become like that of locusts. They cause harm to others. They become like beasts or insects. They do bad deeds. They rebel against God. They also receive power like that of scorpions and torment many people. The scorpion symbolizes evil powers. The scorpion is an extremely poisonous animal. There is said to be much pain when stung by a scorpion. First Kings chapter twelve verse eleven, Ezekiel chapter two verse six, Luke chapter ten verse nineteen. Many locusts will come out of this smoke. Locusts do not appear alone or as one pair. Locusts appear in swarms. This means that many who have been contaminated with wrong ideas will emerge. Thus, it means that many people who have fallen to heresies and evil ideologies will emerge. Verse four: They were told not to harm the grass of the earth. Or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Here, the grass of the earth or any plant or tree symbolizes believers with faith. They symbolize believers who regard the word of God. As life, believers who possess life are not deceived by the locusts. 
they are not deceived by heretics. True believers are not deceived by lies. However, apostates or people of greed are deceived. These heretics target and deceive those who have not received the seal of God. Thus, those who do not receive the seal of God will be deceived. Therefore, we must be able to recognize the works of the devil. We must depend on God and walk only down the right path. Luke chapter 23 verse 31 Our faith must have life. We must become believers with power. Verse 5 They were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. It says, torture them for five months. Five months equal 150 days. This is the same length of time as the flood of Noah. Genesis chapter 7 verses 23 and 24. Genesis chapter 8 verses 2 and 3. Therefore, this is the period of trials and tribulations. The locusts will torment the people with the power of scorpions. However, they do not torment people without limits. It says that they can only torment people for five months. This is God's set period of time. This is God's chosen period of time. It is the period of trials and tribulations. We need to endure during that time. God watches over us. We must not fear no matter how strong Satan's forces may be. We must not fear even if scorpions are to sting us. They can only torment us for the time period that God has allowed them. We can overcome tribulations if we have faith. Verse 6, During those days men will seek death, but will not find it. It says they will long to die, but death will elude them. The damages done by the locusts were too great. It was frightening like the sting of a scorpion. It was a great affliction. That is why they wished to die. However, they could not die even if they wanted to. This is because God prevented them from dying. Therefore, this is a model of the punishment of hell. The punishment of hell is even more frightening than death. In the end of this world, those who do not repent will receive this kind of punishment. They will be plagued by the devil's hands. Therefore, those who serve the devil as his slave and chase after evil will face this kind of suffering. They will face greater sufferings 
than death. We believers can overcome all trials. It will take place for five months. There is a set time. God watches over us. Also, in verse four, it says that they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree. We can overcome tribulations if we have faith with vitality. We must rely on the Lord. We must have the power of life. Revelation chapter six verse six. There a black horse appears. It says to not damage the olive oil and wine. Likewise, we must prepare our faith well. We must be filled with God's grace. Then we can overcome. Various kinds of hardships. Now, in the last days, the church and its believers will face great tribulations. We face the plagues of the seals and trumpets. Nevertheless, we can overcome all tribulations with faith. Here we will conclude our.